Ladies and gentlemen, this is part one of the Queen's Reich cranked and ranked, and um, there it was a it was a good episode, but uh, yeah. your old pal, old head, forgot to click record on the Zoom meeting, and so this will be an old school version of cranked and ranked, where we used to have the podcast audio, and you would just be looking at album covers the whole time. So I apologize that our beautiful faces <laughs> are not there for you to look at, but there's plenty of other videos where you see our faces. And I I promise you, I will do my best to press record on part two of Queen's Reich so you can see our faces while we rank what has now been dubbed the good half of Queen's Reich. Um, anything to say before we begin, Eddie? <laughs> Uh, this, you know, just finally gives me a little bit of, uh, solace that time we did the, uh, recorded the first ever lost episode, the Metallica one we, we did as what was going to be the first episode where my recording equipment shit the bed and we lost like a whole hour and a half of audio. Yeah. So hey, you know at what? least we still have. It yeah. only took three years, but I finally fucked up. <laughs> I remember now. Hi, everyone. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to uh, Cranked and Ranked. That's what it is. You this- bastards. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this th- we're actually doing Cranked and Ranked. Last time was slashed and mashed. And it now, was. Now we're back to Cranking and Ranking. And another band discography. But not only that, the first two-parter of this year so far, right? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think you could every- say Outcast was kind of a two-parter, but this is the first legit two-part ranking that we're doing. Yeah, and and it it's, is it's Queen's as as you can we're see. We're back in the we're back in the metal zone. Yeah. So, well, for those of you for the for, well, yeah, I did the, for the- I did the quotation <laughs> signs. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who who don't come here for rap, we're we're back. <laughs> yeah, congrats. Um, so yeah, so we are doing a two part Queens Reich ranking because I didn't know that there were technically 18 songs under the songs, albums under the name Queens Reich. And so, um, that's a lot. So we're going to, yes. we're going to half it up with nine and nine. So this episode will be the bottom nine of the Queens Reich full length output. Um, although no, we we are including one EP. We are including the uh, the Queen's Reich EP in in uh, this ranking. So it's seventeen full links and one EP that we're including in this. And we had to. And as usual, old head here to steer the ship. And as usual, with me as always, Mister Eddie Sparks. That is me. Yes, yes, indeed. F- fun fact: for many years, I thought Queen's Reich was a British band. Because a lot of things about them seems British, don't you think? There's a there's a strong new wave of British heavy metal influence. There's that, a lot of priest in there. That yeah. and I also th- I also sometimes thought I heard a British accent when Jeff would be singing. I I hear that too. Yeah, <laughs> and I, so, uh, I I definitely definitely hear the the British influence on their music. Yeah, and playing the name Queen's Reich because so I just Queen. It's you know the the Queen of England. Yeah. That's what I think of. So for for many years, <laughs> like I probably well into the nineties, I thought they were British, and then eventually one day I think I saw an interview and I went, "Whoa, they're all." They're all they all have American accents. <laughs> yeah, even even on Silent Lucidity, he's like. Hush now, don't you cry? Yeah, like, it's like very yeah. posh, yeah. you know, British. You know, <laughs> have a spot of tea and a crumpet now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know have to make that happen now. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so we we got a lot to cover. And as we know, nor- don't you cry? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring any British snacks this episode, unfortunately, but uh, I do have my coffee, and that's a thing. Hey, 
cranked and ranked mug. Can't cranked and ranked mugs. I'm always yeah. I'm always sporting that. So you, I I have merch. We have merch. You can buy merch. Do it. But you know. Oh yeah, it's been pretty slow on the sales side of things, but you know, it's always there. If you if you have an extra twenty bucks in your pocket one day and you can go buy a mug or a t shirt or something. Anyway, so yeah, we always start off by talking about where the bands came into our lives, and Queensrÿche is a weird one because they're a band that I knew of before I heard them. And it was because my my older brother, I have two older brothers, but the middle one, who's 10 years older than I am, he didn't listen to a lot of rock music. He listened, Hmm. he was a guy that had all of the Doctor Who soundtracks and sound effects vinyl records. So I I, I would just walk into his room and I would just hear, and it was like, and I'm just like, and he's my, he's an artist. So he was like just drawing and just having this Doctor Who shit playing, you know? So, but when he did listen to rock music, it always seemed to have, it was was always the stuff like Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, um, and things mm-hmm. like that. And he had, and I remember, I don't even know, I don't know if he had the album or if one time I heard him talking about Operation Mind Crime because I think that somehow fell into his wheelhouse of shit that he thought was good. And so yeah. I didn't, but I was like, oh, that's that's an album that like even my brother is into that album. I don't, whatever, I don't know. But I never, I don't think I ever heard anything off of it except for Eyes of a Stranger. Hmm. And I liked that song, but, you know, as a young person, it didn't like drive me to go find out about that band. Then flash Hmm. forward a couple years later, the video for Silent Lucidity came out. And just like a lot of people, that song was really infectious for me because I was Mm -hmm. just like, that's a time that's a time on uh, MTV and popular music that I really miss where you could put out a slow building six minute song and it is a massive hit. And I'm just like. Yeah, that's pretty great. And it was just one of those things where um, I liked, I just loved the song and ended up getting Empire on CD and, you know, became a fan at that point. But I, ne- I never was, a, I never became a huge fan because really, like, that's the last album of theirs I bought when it came out was Empire and only one. Yeah. I have several of them on vinyl now, but through their career, like, once they put out, like, mm. Promised Land, I didn't get that album and I didn't. I haven't been following them, although I have heard things here and there. So I definitely am not a Queensryche fan unless you want to talk about the first several albums. And then I would say, absolutely, I'm a Queensryche fan. So uh, what about you? For me, it's uh, a mixture of two gaming franchises. Ah. and, And the first one actually was Guitar Hero. Okay. Because Jet Jet City Woman oh. is on Warriors of Rock, That's a good and I remember one. hearing it. Yeah, and I remember hearing it at the time and thinking, "This is this is somehow mellow and heavy at the same time," and being like quite enamored with that. But I didn't yeah. really like. I didn't really like go any deeper because I was into a lot heavier stuff at the time. Like I'd pretty much just discovered thrash, so I was, at that point I was like Metallica, Slayer. You know anything that sounded like yeah, same same here. Only many years before, but yeah, when when Silent City came out, Silent City was like nothing I was listening to, but yeah, it somehow affected me. Yeah, that that's the mark of a good song, though. Yeah, for sure, agreed for sure. It's like, but for me, what sold me on Queen's Reich was a few years later, I got a hold of the the last. PS2 era GTA I ever got to play was Vice City Stories. And on Vice City Stories, the rock station has, you know, among greats such as um, I think Electric Eye by Judas Priest, Breaking the Chains by Dokken, Lick It Up by Kiss. All of a sudden I hear this awesome speed metal song that I'd never ever heard before. Mm -hmm. And you just hear... And lo and behold, it was Queen of the Right. Yeah. And then Je- Jeff comes in with that. And it's just the riff kicks in and everything about it is awesome. And then sheer fate alone, that same week, 
the music video for Queen of the Reich came on TV. Oh, wow. I had the, yeah, I had the, I, I think it was either the Kerrang! channel or the Scuzz channel I had on. And, you know, both the major rock channels on TV. I, I don't know if Scuzz is around anymore, but Kerrang! still is. And they were having this, like, 80s versus 90s metal um, hour. Yeah. And Queen of the Reich came on, and I was like, this is awesome it's like you know the really cheesy star wars intro the you know yeah it, it just i was captivated from start to finish and it it really kicked off a love like a deeper love of 80s cheese <laughs> yeah 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 but that song's fucking fantastic mm-hmm. yeah cool so yeah so yeah so so i but 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 i, I would say that you know would you consider yourself a, a big queen's fan or moderate or not at all. I'd say, I'd say I'd say the like uh, EP through to Empire, like that that block of albums. Yeah, you know, e- is is the era. You know, I'm giving something away here. <laughs> you know, I, those are going to be pretty high up. I don't think, but I I, I think I don't think anybody doubted that. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to be very surprised by by our ranking, but maybe a couple of little surprises for those of you who are like really big Queens fans. If you're watching, um, for, first off, if you are a huge Queens fan, fan, uh, please don't uh, don't be offended by the things that I might say on this particular episode because I will say some things. Um, this is not the love fest. The next no, one will be. It, it's not. <laughs> but I. But I do have to say that compared to like some bands, like the the, the bad Queensrÿche is still better than a lot of shit out there. But yeah. but that being said, there are some stinkers here and um, some, in my opinion, uh, un, <laughs> unnecessary choices or whatever. I don't know. Um, but uh, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to try to give it the the uh, the respect it deserves because they are a band that like you know f- for 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 better for worse have been putting out albums consistently for yeah. f- forty years now you know so um, it, albeit now I think the band only has one original member in it but you know whatever I think I think it's two I think the bass there's... player and one of the guitar players yeah okay. Yeah. Um, um but yeah, I was I was just thinking to myself right then, there is every possibility that right this second Chris DeGarmo is flying a plane. Is that what he does now? Yeah, he's a pilot. So he it, yeah. it, does he do music at all anymore, Chris DeGarmo? He yeah, I think I think he dips his toe back in from time to time. He did a couple co-writes with Queensryche since his departure but, yeah yeah you know I, th- I think he does you know do it but if he's fulfilled flying planes i mean that's a cool job yeah you know yeah absolutely yeah. so uh, yeah i mean that's plus that he's like the cool pilot is like yeah i used to be in Queensryche, you know yeah. in the heyday you know he's <laughs> like what what's it what's it like to get out of a band before they really get into the crap part of the career <laughs> Because <laughs> I think he did. If I, well, we'll, we'll get to that anyway. So we have eight. Well, he was one of the one of the primary songwriters, and he just bounced. You can tell. So I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so eighteen releases from Queensrÿche. This time is the is the bottom nine. So eighteen down to ten is what we're doing today. And um, we'll just jump right into it because you probably already, anyone out there probably already knows what's going to be my number 18 if you know their catalog. But let's just jump into your number 18 Queensryche album. Okay, so my number 18 Queensryche album is Q2K. Oh, all right. That is that is not mine, but go, go ahead. And- I have my reasons. Okay. First so. off, can we talk about how bad that title is? Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, Ar- around that time, <laughs> everybody was doing 2K shit. <laughs> yeah, and that and it did yeah, not it's... age well. It literally just looks like old people stuff now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it definitely has that "Hey, fellow kids" vibe going on. Yeah, but um, I mean, this is the first album without Chris DeGarmo. Um, and this was who, 1999, you know, I believe, when that one came out, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like just leading up to the millennium, yeah. as you can see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, Chris DeGarmo went on uh, and joined the League of 80s Rockers, who went on to become pilots. 
uh, you know, alongside the likes of Bruce Dickinson, for example, although Bruce is still in Iron Maiden. Uh, Falling Down, I'm jumping straight into the track by track. Okay. That... I'm very aware that I'm listening to an album from 1999. The production right out of the gate, it, you know, it says, hey, big, big two oh 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 coming up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's got a cool riff to it, but like, it's, it, it was like, oh man, <laughs> this <laughs> one, yeah, <laughs> uh, Sacred Ground, They've definitely like shed the prog metal and adopted the alternative hard rock thing on this one. Uh-huh. Granted, they you know they went grunge on the previous album, but on this one they kind of this to me feels like a, a neutered version of Here in the Now Frontier. Without yeah. it, it's like it's like Here in the Now Frontier without any edge. So well, yeah, it's 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 weird because the the previous album, even though it does sound of its time it still has a really enjoyable and kind of cool quality to it where this one sounds kind of out of touch of the times a little bit yeah and so it's yeah. it's very weird but you know absolutely one life is a big old anthemic psychedelic viber mm-hmm. um that i wish was as interesting as that description um when the rain comes is all right how could I know is also all right. It, see, none of this is offensive, but at the same time, none of it is memorable to me. Yeah. So yeah. Th- this is, this to me was the most bland experience of any Queensryche album I, I heard. So, you know, th- this one, I was like, hurl something at me that I don't expect. But by the time it set the tone, I, I was kind of like, oh, this is exactly what I thought was going to happen yeah. on the last one, you know? Beside you, I always respect the band for trying different things, but post-grunge just doesn't fit their vibe. Um, Liquid Sky, again, this makeover that they've done on this one isn't nearly as enjoyable as here in the Now Frontier. Breakdown has a cool riff, but again, I find myself thinking to myself, "Is this is not the sort of thing I come to this band for?" Yeah. Um, Burning Man, I like the spooky lead bends in there. It's a shame they went down this bland sonic route of post grunge mm-hmm. as opposed to you know heavying it up a little bit. Because I feel like if they heavied it up alongside with the kind of psyched out qualities going on, it could have hit a lot harder. Yeah. Um, see the previous album <laughs> um now this makes me laugh what kind of man makes me laugh because they spelt it like a british text message sent from a chav <laughs> in the mid 2000s <laughs> like <laughs> you what mate specifically spelt the letter u um w-o-t and then m and then the letter eight with you what mate i'm gonna come over to your house and, and bang you out bruv uh the right side of my mind that's not, that cool sounds closure. sexual. Yeah. Oh, what bang you out? Or? Yeah, ba- <laughs> yeah, bang you out. Bang you out. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. hiding something. <laughs> 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 um, the right, the right side of my mind is a pretty cool closer, but I, I am very glad at this point that this album is done. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time on this album watching the clock. Uh, it just felt really bland to me. Yeah. It, it Like I say, it's a neutered version of the album that came before it, and I, I just didn't find it interesting sonically at all. Um, You know, at least with some later albums, there'd be some strange choices that were like, wow, okay, that's from out of nowhere, whereas this one's like, we have a vibe, it's not our vibe, Yeah, and we're going to do it for a while, <laughs> you know? So... Sorry, I know I kind of banged that one out, so to speak. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> over to you. <laughs> That's all right. Um, I'm, we're going to be back to you before we know it because this is going to be the sh- a really short one. For those of you who know me, know that I don't care for these kind of albums. Not, my number eighteen is "Take Cover" from 2007, mm-hmm. which is an album full of cover songs around the time that the band were trying anything they could to get some kind of interest in what they were doing. And the covers are not interesting, not very good. They're fine. They're whatever. But 
I'm putting it last be- because like there are a couple albums here that I just think are really bad, but at least those are original songs. And this is not a good album, and it's not even their songs. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, this I mean, they it's just yeah. There was there's there was nothing in it for me. It was I was just like all right, it just just get through this fucking album. And so, um, so you know I. Yeah, I don't like cover albums for the most part. It's very rare. If a band puts out an album filled with covers, they got to be Metallica or some band that's going to bring something really interesting and different to the songs and make them their own. But even these just sound bland and Jeff Tate. Yeah. (laughs) That's it. I mean, it's like (laughs) that's the thing is eventually like for a certain number of years, it's like. One of the only factors that made me like albums was Jeff Tate's voice. If you took mm-hmm. his voice out of a lot of those albums, I'd be like, this, there's nothing here for me. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, there you go. That's the Tate cover is my number 18. Moving on to your number 17. Well, I can jump straight off of you because my number 17 is also Tate cover. All right. Um, yeah. I did a track by track for this and it all consists of naming <laughs> the artist and saying cover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, every single song that showed up, I was like, great song. I want to hear the original, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So with that, you know, it's a, it's a diverse set of covers though. It is a one time listen for me. If I want to hear these songs, I'll, I'll listen to the originals tenfold you know yeah it's 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 a, it's a release for a massive fan like if you're a massive yeah. queens fan you probably enjoy this and that's fine but not for not for sort of average listeners or casual listen listeners it's yeah not enough yeah so with that you know i've kind of wrapped that one up cool so we can, yeah we can just jump straight to the 16 no, no so my 17 that was your 17 Seven, sorry your 17 my number my, my number 17 i thought i was 24 <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, i mean i sometimes yeah. act like i'm 17 <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, my number 17 is the 2009 album American Soldier, which is their okay. 11th album, continuing a string of really bad decisions for <laughs> Queensryche. And I'm telling you right now, like I don't I don't know anyone in Queensryche and I hate to make these kind of assumptions, but sometimes when you make certain choices, it kind of paints a picture of what you're actually trying to do. And it's all like, look, we're we're not we're not playing big venues anymore. What do we do? Why don't we do a sequel to an album that everybody loves? Why don't we do an album full of cover songs? Oh, wait, I know how we can appeal to the American people. Let's do a concept album about an American soldier. They love those over in America. And um, yeah. It is, it is, it is awful. Like this is (laughs) not only is the production awful, the songwriting is awful. The mix is awful. There's that second song unafraid where the, where the sound clips are louder than the fucking music. And I'm just like, why, what is that? What was the point of this? And it's just poorly produced, poorly written. And at this point, it had become very, very clear to me that the things that made this band special, aside from Jeff Tate, are gone. Um, mm-hmm. So Jeff Tate's voice is still there, and he's still a great so he's still a great singer today. Um, so that's great. I've always liked hearing him sing, but this thing is so heavy-handed and cheeseball that I could not listen to all of the songs all the way through. Once I was around like song four or five, I was like, oh. There are a few choices they make, lyrically speaking, where I just not not even not just on this album. There's a few albums where I'm just no man. Somebody needed to walk in and be like, oh, d- delete that. Okay, we need we needed <laughs> Lars Ulrich's dad to come yeah. in. Yeah, if I was your advisor, what would I say? I would say delete that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I would delete all of American Soldier. It is. I couldn't find anything I liked about it. And at that point, just having Jeff Tate singing on it wasn't enough for me. And 
And I, the whole time, I literally just felt like, look, maybe people will care about us because we're doing a song about about soldiers and 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 everybody. America's all crazy about the military and stuff. Um, not all of us. That's right, brother. Not <laughs> all of us. And here we are, draft notices in the mail already being <laughs> hey, mailed to our houses. <laughs> I'm already, I've aged out, man. Nobody's going to, yeah. nobody wants a chubby 45-year-old to be defending the country, all right? It's not a, it's not a thing. Speak for yourself. And I have bad knees. <laughs> I have bad knees. You're ah, not- ah, ah, yep. Me too. Me too. Scar. Scar. Yeah, he right got down. kicked in the, kicked in the leg when he, when he was a, a young pup. And so he can't, he can't serve. I've served my country. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen? Have you uh, ever seen the movie uh, Stripes? With, I've completed with, Call of Duty five, <laughs> seven times. <Yep. laughs> the, movie, the movie Stripes with Bill Murray. You ever see that movie? Uh, no, but I've, I've I've seen clips of it. It's pretty funny, but it, it it has like some really great lines that just always make me laugh. And one of them is when um, Bill Murray and Harold Ramis are in the the office rec- recruiting office for the military and the guy asks them are either of you two homosexual and they kind of look at each other and, and they go uh, <laughs> well no but we are willing to learn <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great anyway <laughs> cool uh so where, where where are we at where are we at what number are we on what, what number am i on 16 S- 16 yeah Cool. So my number 16 is dedicated to chaos. Wow. We matched up for one. My number 16 is also dedicated to chaos from 2011. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. cool. Now, me, me and 2011 got history. We've got beef. Um, but above all, 2011 has this album. <laughs> this... <laughs> Um, and this really did it really does sound like throwing things at the wall to see what's going to (laughs) stick because as much as I love genre hopping none of it sounds like anyone actually knows what they're yeah. trying to yeah. do. <laughs> you know? Also, yeah. also fun, fun fact, as you go, as you go through the tracks here, k- try to guess how many times I audibly said, fuck off to this album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if there's one thing this album has yielded, it's an incredibly diverse set of notes from me oh so nice nice let's 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 get into it let's get started so this is the with last album with started. jeff tate with yes, Jeff Tate. last well the, the last like official queens reich album with jeff tate yeah the cock is so confusing yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah anyway like a, like i was saying with that segue that i think you missed let's get started oh sorry with, Get started. It's okay. Sorry. It's cool. I, I'm I'm looking at the note right now. Uh, it's so I've, I have the advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's appropriately titled. It being the first track and all, um, it plays like a light hard rock song. Uh, feeling a slight ACDC influence on this song. Um, this is Queensrÿche, however, so <laughs> it's not the kind of band I'd go to to hear an ACDC type thing. Hotspot Junkie. Definitely a lighter sound on this album so far. Some of those guitars on this one have a sound garden-y vibe. And it was at this point you're I began be, You're to being think, very nice there. <laughs> 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 it it gets better, trust me. <laughs> so, or the other direction. Uh, got it bad. They've gone chili peppers now. Jeff is horny. This whole thing is... Huh? <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah. And then by the time, you know, funnily enough, I mentioned Chili Peppers, we get the song Around the World. Uh, we're on our fourth stylistic shift so far. Uh, All You Need Is Love, apparently, if you haven't already heard that Beatles song. Um, higher. Yes to the saxophone. I do like that Queensryche have on occasion busted out a saxophone. Mm-hmm. I've never heard... A saxophone part I didn't think was necessary. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
How, however, you know, this funky thing, cool, retail therapy is grungy, and it's at this point I'm realizing this isn't genre hopping, this is flailing for ideas yeah. from did you already multiple pass, different did, areas. Did you already pass the song called Hot Spot Junkie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I, that is... That is that's a fuck off from you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even hear. I didn't even hear the song yet. I just saw it in the track listing, and I'm like, "Come on, you old fucks!" Like, that's the one. That is the thing. Is that like if you? And I don't care if it's 2011. It doesn't matter if you are a musician and you're going to write a song about electronic devices or something people being addicted to to television or whatever it it, it just it, you just you you always come off like as an old old grumpy man yelling at a cloud like it's get off my damn lawn you kids <laughs> yeah. and they always try to come up with some sort of really like interesting way to put it like hot spot junkie do you know what it's about because you had to find a hot spot to use your phone back in the days and i'm addicted to it to being on my phone we have to write a song about this and it's it's really 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 bad and then of course and they also have a song called retail therapy which you just passed by and it's like yeah did, did, was he literally just flipping through like a cosmopolitan magazine and he's just like oh i'm gonna write a song <laughs> i don't know why he's british but i'm going to he probably talks like that <laughs> Actually, his accent is more just like, hello, I'm Jeff Tate. I'm going to write a song about retail therapy. <laughs> That's a pretty good Jeff Tate because he, he really enunciates when <laughs> he talks. There's a lot of Jim Carrey in that, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, righty then. Um, anyway, I just, uh, uh, yeah, I, I just, there were so many things about this that just, I would, I just, it's clear there needed to be a change. <laughs> with this band yeah. at this point because it is it's not it's not it, it didn't annoy me as much as american soldier because it, it in, instead of just being heavy-handed and cheesy it's it like you said it's just confused and trying yeah. desperately for anything that's going to bring them into the public eye you know it's it's just it's bad <laughs> anyway where were you <laughs> uh, I was, I was, yeah, I was just going to jump jump back in with uh, At The Edge. You know what I'm saying? No, actually, I don't. You're not making any sense. Um, <laughs> Drive is a song that I forgot to write a note on. Um, <laughs> what we do... Hang on, sorry. What we do, you know, they decided to bring back the W-O-T spelling of that. I'm... I'm really not sure who that's for. You know, maybe it's some sort of inside joke. Um, I'm sure it probably is. It, that being said, I don't even fucking know how to describe this song. <laughs> I, 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 like, like it, I, I, I actually was like, huh? Okay, excuse me, baking powder. Uh, I Take You is a song. Uh, the Lie... <laughs> <laughs> the line, there's, the, the if there's one thing so you can mean. say about this album, it's got songs. Yeah, <laughs> it's certainly it, it's certainly one of the albums of all time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> the lie is a kind of grungy track. Big noise uh, is a oh spelt with a with a Z. Oh shit. Word, yeah. Uh, Viber closer. This album, legit, is just genuinely throwing things at the wall and seeing what's going to stick. Yeah, that is that's the whole image I had in my head the entire time. It's like they had a bright pink suction cup dildo and a whiteboard, and they were like, "Okay, style." <laughs> Well, oh, we've landed on grunge. It's the it's okay. the it's the culmination of what they've been doing because they were doing albums that were let's see what works, and now it's an entire album of all different choices of let's see what works, and nothing was working, and yeah, then the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Which you know is a shame because I always like albums that genre hop. But yes, yes, this, I agree. This this sadly is a case of it. Falling flat on its very confused face. Yep. Um, 
So with that, that is my number 16, dear Lord. <laughs> I don't have anything to add um, to that. I, it, it's better than American Soldier, but only slightly, and a lot of it is pretty embarrassing. And um, it's the last with Jeff Tate, and that kind of sucks because I like his voice. But, you know, that's one of the things about, you know, Reading up on Queen's Reich and everything, you know, because of the the version of the band that exists now, it's you know, people like people like them with Todd Latore, and um, yeah, and so it's uh, you know that 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 seems like that's going to be the permanent thing for you know who knows maybe maybe for the rest of their existence. But I said this on the last episode when we were sort of alluding to doing Queen's Reich that I was always like you know who's who's the asshole you know who's the asshole in the group and hmm. the more research that i did about it the more i i've come to determine that it might be jeff tate because <laughs> there's always that one person that just like hmm. can't make it work a grown-ass man that can't get over himself and make it work and the more that I just look at things and look at like the lineup changes, what happened with the band, who left the band first and all of this stuff. I'm just like, maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was Jeff. So, uh, I mean, if you're watching this, Jeff, um, we would love to have you on the show and inter interview you, um, about, are you the asshole? Let's, let's do an entire, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't frame it like that. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's maybe that's what we need to do. It's we don't we, we still haven't done another another. Uh, we did Jason Beeler. He came on the show, but we haven't had anybody else. Jeff Tate is mm. uh, is still too big of a get for us. But that would be nice to have you know to mm -hmm. pick his brain a little bit about like what you know on d d addicted. No, it's not called addicted to chaos. What is it called? Dedicated um, to chaos. Addicted to chaos is a Megadeth song. Dedicated to chaos. I just want to be like, you know, what was going on? Like, what do you, were you, were you, what were you on? I mean, I'm, I don't, or fuck, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to number 15. Okay. Uh, so my number 15 is an album you've already covered with, and that is American Soldier. Okay, cool. And uh, my reasons for it being higher than Dedicated to Chaos are that they at least sound a little bit more cohesive. That being said, um, you know, I don't think the songs are memorable at all, but I thought that the, I thought the sound clips, funnily enough, I thought like the stories were interesting and the way the narratives were kind of set up. However, on the flip side of that, doesn't really have the music to back it up. So... Let's dive. Let's dive on in. All right. Um, with uh, Silver, uh, you know, obvious drill sergeant vibes in the vocals. There's a very, you know, clear, you know, <clears throat> tra training setup sort of thing here. You know, Full Metal Jacket style. Unafraid. The beat has a kind of march feel to it. Um, along with sound bites of soldiers telling their stories, which would continue throughout the album. Uh, 100 Mile Stare, uh, keeping the military story vibes going, uh, at 30,000 feet. Okay, cool. <laughs> Dead man's... <laughs> That's really high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, you're up there, man. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Dead Man's Words, uh, Desert Voyage type riff, me likey, and a saxophone solo, which... As you know, as I'd stated previously, saxophones are always a positive thing. Um, <laughs> the killer. I was I was waiting for you to say whether or not the saxophone oh. here was appropriate. Oh nah, nah, hey, the saxophone's <laughs> always appropriate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you seen those like videos of? Um, there's like people on TikTok that do this thing now where it's like. Uh, slap bass at inappropriate times and they'll be watching like a really sad movie scene <laughs> it's like that bit uh, in the lion king where mufasa dies and simba finds his father laying dead after that stampede takes him out and all of a sudden the moment he like realizes he's dead breaks down 
That's like just so fucking funny. But uh yeah. <laughs> that had nothing to do with what I was talking That's about. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, the killer. A lot of latter era Queen's Reich, I've noticed, has a vibe I can only describe as the post grunge feel, which is um a polite way of saying bland <laughs> mid nineties rock. Yeah. Um, middle of hell. And you know, just to throw this out there, I like, I love grunge. It's one of my favorites and post grunge has some, has some good stuff too. However, I don't think of, I, well, I shouldn't think of post grunge when I'm listening to fucking Queens, right? Yeah. Um, middle of hell vibey track. If I were King, Thematically, it's a very sad song. Um, Man Down, a survivor's guilt, clearly the theme on this one. Remember Me is your your gal back home song. Home Again, it, Jeff Tate's duet with his daughter, I believe. Um, and The Voice is this uh, grand closer. Um, all in all, the concept was... There, you know, <laughs> it was there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had and, a concept. You know, they, 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 you know, told a, a narrative with it. However, this, you know, they've done concept albums in the past. Hell, their best album is a concept album. <laughs> arguably, I mean, we we don't know. Argu- we don't know arguably. if we're we're both going to pick that as our number one. Well, well, shit, I've given something away. <laughs> <I>? uh, uh, <laughs> however, you know. This ain't it, dog. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Uh, with that, American Soldier coming in at 15. <clears throat> All right. Cool. My number uh, 15. This is uh, this is when um, I, I, I... Yeah. I might, me, and, me and some people might go our separate Rage ways. Rage for that, order. Did we have it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Um, my number 15 is the 2013 self-titled Queensryche album, the first okay. first with Todd Latore on vocals. So, so overall, I would say that this is an improvement as an album than what they had been doing. Um, and, and but here, okay, number one. I and maybe this is just a, a product of the time, but the um the pitch correction on the vocals is very audible the whole time. And and the thing that I hate about that is that in so many cases the singers do not need it, but modern yeah. producers or old producers using modern equipment don't understand how to organically mix it to where it's not fucking obvious to people that it annoys, like me. So Vocally speaking, I'm already out because I'm just like, I can hear the digital signal in all of the vocals. And I, I that really rubs me the wrong way. Unless you're like a pop group or an industrial group or something, you know. But like in the case of this, the guy's a perfectly good singer. He doesn't need that. He, his voice should sound more natural. I don't know who produced this album, but they fucked up. Number two, and this, this goes, this is a critique pointed at the other band members in Queensryche and at the same time, the fans of the Todd Latore albums of Queensryche. So <clears throat> if you, if you say that he's not trying to do a Jeff Tate impression, you are full of shit. Absolutely full of shit. Now eventually, yeah. <laughs> eventually he wouldn't really be doing it anymore. Like like the the last two albums he's on, there's not there's no things like that. But the first two that he sings on, there are in certain inflections that Jeff Tate is very well known for and the fact that they're all there, he does all of these things. It's like somebody doing a Michael Jackson impression and just making sure to put in all the woos and hee hees and little vocal <laughs> things that he would do. And so my question is, did he think he needed to do that? Or did the other mm. band members say, look, 
You're a new guy, a new guy, but people want Jeff. So can you make your voice sound like Jeff? And he does his best, and that sucks. It's um. So he, he he's literally going up to the mic and going, "My name is Jeff." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and once again, once again, he doesn't need to do that because he's a great singer, and so it, yeah. it annoys me, especially on the first two records he's on, because I'm like, you don't need to do that, and eventually he doesn't. Like that's how I know that he didn't, that he was doing it on purpose, because now you hear him sing, none of that shit's there. So that annoys me too about this album. But the album is not bad. It has a really thin production style that's just really hard it's to get into. Extremely bright. It's just production. it's yeah. yeah. Um, and so and really because of all these things, because of because of the way that Todd sings on this album, the way his vocals are produced, the way the overall sound of the album is, it really sounds like Queen's right created by an algorithm. They just put in. You know, I had I had them listen to to fourteen Queen's Reich albums, and then it put out self titled Queen's Reich in twenty thirteen, and that's yeah, that's what it is. It's a bunch of like almost good songs, and it was a little bit annoying because I felt like it could have been better, and it wasn't, and mm-hmm. so it, you know, and this was this was one of those albums where there was like. In 2013, there were two Queensryche albums. One put out by the Jeff Tate version of Queensryche that was short-lived for one album. And then this version, which I guess is considered the legit version, but you still don't have the the main classic songwriter in it. So who's to say? But whatever, that's, that's legally. Legally, they would win. But in the battle of who made the better Just OK album, Jeff Tate wins that round. Um, but mm. not much better, but better than this particular album. So my number 15 is Queensryche, self-titled, mm. from 2013. OK, so uh, my 14. Now this, going right off of what you said, I actually have... Frequency unknown at my number 14. All right, let's do it. So this is the Jeff Tate <clears throat> Queensryche album. This, this is this is not my number 14, by the way. This is uh this is Rogue Rike, so to speak. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is this to, is to, this is honey, we have Queensryche at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh for those unfamiliar with the with the full backstory of this, I, I copied the little thing from wikipedia over to my notes just as a little summary yeah so uh let's let's just do a little bit of a <laughs> last time on queen's uh frequency unknown is a studio album released under the name queen's it was released by jeff tate's temporary version of the band before a settlement determined that only the other band members were entitled to use the name queen's mm-hmm. so this is in essence a jeff tate solo album Dressed in a Queen's Reich trench coat. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 yeah, so this is Queen's Reich Rogue. Yeah. So uh, note the not so subtle FU rings on the fist adorning the artwork. You know, frequency unknown in air quotes. Bullshit. The album's yeah. called "Fuck You." Also, you know? <laughs> also, can we can we make the decision right now that having a fist as your album cover is done? That's no longer a thing. No more fists as album covers because uh, man, that shit's been overdone. That is. <laughs> that is, Start putting feet on there, man. There you go. Yeah, there you go for the for the foot fetish cysts out there. Sponsored by Wiki Feet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so with that, um, so cold. It has a cool opening riff. Mm-hmm. Um, it does, however, to me, fall into the zone of the generic modern metal of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it definitely has a. Well, this is what the contemporary bands, you know, at our level of heaviness are doing. Let's let's do this. Um, there has some unusual stuff going on, which I admire. Uh, you know, like a xylophone, why the fuck not? Yeah. Uh, give it to you. This falls somewhere in the zone of 
layered Queensryche guitars and ever so slightly alt rock tinged balladry. Um, Slave, I actually really like this song. At points, Jeff sounds like mid 90s Whitfield Crane, um, not to mention the riffs. Uh, what the fuck was that fade out at the end though? Like <laughs> they ended the song, but they like put a split second fade on a song with an ending. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah. To maybe be, one to, of the members just yelled something really problematic at the end, and they were com- like, "Oh, that take was too good." To be completely <laughs> honest, the the I think they had been working with the same producer for many albums, and then this was done by the same producer. And I I don't think right. that guy was quite up to the job because they were all hmm. kind of like not very well produced. Like j- he knew just enough to get to work behind the boards and get everything to work. But the final product was always just kind of like, ah, it could have been a lot better. And so maybe it's just, it could, I, I would not put it past him if it was a thing where the, it went to press and they're just like, Oh, we didn't realize that weird fade out was here. Ah, fuck. I just put the goddamn album out. <laughs> Turns out there's like a whole other seven minutes of song, but they just like just cut it off by mistake. <laughs> We're done with this one. Uh, yeah. Uh, In the Hands of God is a vibey one. Um, Running Backwards is a cool song. All the components of this track were engaging to me. Uh, the rocking parts and the vibey bits. Uh, Life Without You is an alt rocky ballad. As you can see, we have tracks now that are beginning to stand out to me. Yeah. Um, yep. Which is nice. Um, nice change of pace from the from the last few. Mm-hmm. Um, everything is a power ballad type track. Fallen is a bit of a clock watching moment for me. Um, the weight of the world is this melancholy closing track. Now, this is where the new material ends, and the album commits the ultimate sin yes. on this show by re recording four classic Queensryche songs as bonus tracks. I'll say, I've said it before, I've said it again. Leave your classic material alone! It's classic! You don't need to correct it! Yeah. Don't, and I'm gonna yeah. go. I'm gonna go one further. Don't ever cover it or re record it. Don't remix it. Don't remaster it. Put it out as it is. Because it's a classic yeah. for a reason. Re- Ugh, sorry. Just stop. Yeah. Just stop it. I really want. I really want like the, the there to be like a changing of the guard where like I just want to stop seeing remastered versions yeah. of albums. Just stop doing that. It's unnecessary. Miss, miss me with that shit. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck out of here. Do better. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Uh, like I say, a couple cool songs, but, you know. Cover songs after that. Yeah. So, no. Yeah. the uh, Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I say, it's a decent release. Yep. It has its, it has its moments. But, it's certainly a step up. But clearly, you, you think the Todd LaTorre version won that battle for 2013. For, for me, it comes from a place of... They sound they sound like they know what they're doing again on that one, and also <laughs> it's only thirty five minutes long. And as we all know on this show, we're fans of short albums. I like to have an album that I could potentially listen to again because I want to listen to it again. All right, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'd, Give I don't that. necessarily want, yeah. H- however, you know, like we've said. There are also excellent long albums, so... A few, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Angel Dust. Um, so, yeah. Okay, my... Over to you. My number, yeah. four, my number 14 is the second Todd LaTorre album, Condition Human, from 2015. A really bad title, first off. Um, that is... <laughs> It's just so, it's bad. Anyway, so I'm, this is going to be real short, because... I, it to me it's very similar to the album before, except production is better, songwriting has gotten better. Todd Latore mm-hmm. still doing a Jeff Tate impression, but at this point I was already ready for that, and so it didn't annoy me as much. But eh, but you know, song, songs are better. Like yeah, it, overall it's it's I feel like 
just like a lot of classic bands from back in the day, I think with this version of the band, they needed a couple albums to figure out what the fuck they were doing. And um, it's not bad. It's just still really missing something for me. Um, I don't really know what it is because there's there's a part of me that thinks that with these albums, they started to try to be kind of proggy. Mm, eh, I use that term lightly, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, um, yeah I mean, t- t- there's there's always that thing of, um, you know, prog hanging over Queen's Reich, you know? Yeah. But it's, it you know, we're, they're not, they're not yes, you no. know? No, <laughs> they're, they're no. <laughs> they're no. Yeah. <laughs> At this point. They're, they're more... They're more like prog in their approach, whereas like the music tends to be, you know, it's intricate, but it's not, you know, shifting time signatures every other second. Yeah. Like generally speaking, structurally, it's pretty straightforward, but it's the approach to it and like the busyness of the drums yeah. and how they, you know, the guitars play off one another. It, it, yeah, and I feel like they're trying to get back to that with these albums, but I just don't think it's there yet with condition human mm. for me. Um, and I, and I, and I, you know, and I will back that up now because I've now that now after hearing the last, you know, the two more, more recent albums that are higher up on this list, I'm like, yeah, I think that they just had to get their groove back or some shit. And, um, but it's not there yet on condition human. It still really feels like something's not right there with this album but it's not bad it's but it's it's my number 14 <laughs> moving on to your number Fair. 13 cool so my number 13 is that was awful i don't know why i thought that, <laughs> that thought was necessary uh <laughs> my number 13 is operation mind crime 2 all right cool let's get into it uh, so this album kind of <laughs> shot itself in the foot right out of the gate by being a sequel to what is widely regarded as the masterpiece album. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, now, here's something. I came out of this not really knowing the story behind this one, quite like I did with the original can, can, Minecraft. Can I be completely honest with you? I, you I don't know the, the I story still to the don't original? even know the story to the original. I know there's a nun, somebody gets murdered, they're trying to control somebody doing something. Because like I don't care. I I Fair. I, I li- <laughs> like are the songs good and memorable? Awesome. It, it, I, it's just like for some reason that aspect doesn't ever connect with me through an album. Hmm. Like it's like any okay. album that's a that's that's a story. I always only catch bits of it because I don't care. <laughs> so <laughs> at the end of the day, I like good songs. So fair. So where was I at? I was so- at song Operation one. Mind Crime 2. Song one, uh, Fry Height Overture. Overture. Uh, it's an intro kind of track. Uh, Convict is a nine-second soundbite of a prison guard freeing the main character. Honestly, they could have just st- stuck that at the end of track one or the start of track three. You know, it's just CD era. They're getting kind of like, oh, look, let's have a little little baby track here. Oh, <laughs> um, um, so you get, <laughs> you get I'm American. Queen's right goes thrash, kind of. Well, um, they're trying to do a speak to me. Like I just feel, I yeah. feel, I feel like there's parts on this album that sounds like, oh, do a song like that, you know? It's yeah. Speak the word, uh, yeah. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm American. It's kind of thrashy. Uh, One foot in hell, not to be confused with the forbidden song of the same name. That song fucking rules. Um, however, it's a groovy one. Hostage, I feel like this album shot itself in the foot trying to follow up the masterpiece that is the original. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. uh, the, the Hands, while this album may not be nearly as good as the original, it's at least pretty damn Queensryche compared to something like Q2K. Mm-hmm. Um, Speed of Light is a vibey track. Signs Say Go is this up-tempo song. Cool harmonized leads in there. 
rearrange you. Sounds like the theme song to a secret agent themed kids cartoon from the mid 2000s. Trust me on this one because I was there. That was very, that was uh, very specific. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it done, man. I've, I've I, I know. I've been there. <laughs> That's um, it's like that sounds like an opinion of somebody who's looking. I'm looking at right now who's in a red flannel and a kiss T-shirt and a, with a goatee who lives in England. Yes, <laughs> I could uh, be I anybody. Stuff like that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> currently on this podcast yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> How much would you flip your shit if another dude walked in looked exactly like this? That, then I would know that we were in the Matrix. Because that would be yeah yeah it'd be some sort of, that's some weird ass shit right there, and then I'd just start dodging bullets while I'm like casually doing this podcast, um, yeah the chase, oh hi Ronnie, um, murderer, this song is all over the place proggy, um, circles, is another song I forgot to specify Ronnie James Dio is is singing on the chase mm -hmm. but here's the thing. That should be, holy fuck, Ronnie's on here. But it's like, oh, hey, dude. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Circles is another song. If I could change it all. Oh, hi, Mary. Um, an international con confrontation, a junkies blues, uh, you know, clock watching is set in at this point. Fear City Slide. Yep. Okay. All the promises, closing track, a, a duet between um, the main guy and the the nun Mary, presumably reunited in you know in the spirit realm. Uh, bada boom, bada bing. Uh, this album didn't need to be a thing. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I was, I was. I was yeah. <laughs> um, I think this album could have been better received if it hadn't tried to tack itself onto Operation Mindcrime and been its own thing, you know? Probably, uh, but it also wouldn't have sold as many copies, and that was the reason <laughs> right there. Yeah, true. Yeah, actually, you know, you're, you're right. Because um, this was like, what, 2006? CDs are still, you know, yeah, 2006. Still buying, buying, buying CDs at that time, you know, downloads were still something, but um, I think 2006 would have been around the time that, it, that you you purchase music on iTunes and have to download it to your device, yeah, kind of thing. I remember it and well. Then you got to search for the hot spot because you're a hot spot <laughs> junkie. My green iPod Nano, thinking eight gig was enough for my music collection. <laughs> that's at the like time. that's up that's up there with that fucking Judas Priest lyric and beware my megabyte. <laughs> oh fuck! Off. <laughs> yeah, I, rem I remember that. That was like one of your first major fuck off moments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, oh, somebody <laughs> somebody brought up somebody brought up recently that we should do an entirely brand new Judas Priest ranking because now I'm like a. F a fan, but I'm, I'm still only yeah. a fan up to painkiller. Like painkiller to me is not the great album that everyone says it is. It's got some great songs on it, but that's, they start to really fall off at that point. It's like, Oh, you guys were doing kind of doing your own thing. And then you really were like, no, we're metal. We've been metal this whole mm -hmm. time. You just didn't hear the albums. Right. Um, anyway, <laughs> but yeah, cause I am, I am enjoying like, I'm at the point now where I'm like, man, I love all that old shit. I love the nice. 70s and 80s priest. I'll probably get around to the later stuff. I don't know. Because modern Iron Maiden hasn't really clicked with me much either. There's a couple albums that I go, I like this. But for the most part, I'm like, I'm going to go back and listen to the other stuff. Thanks. So um, mm. who knows? We'll, but we'll get to that band sometime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just for just for you Queens right yeah. folk out there. Anyway, so um if you're still here, is it my turn? Yeah. yeah. My uh I'm gonna do this quick. My number 13 is frequency unknown or F U man from 2013. <laughs> Jeff Tate's temporary version of Queens Reich. Um I, I will say it's better than the last few Queens Reich albums that were before this. And I like it more than the first two Todd Latore albums, but it is still, like you've said, this sort of modern, ununique version of their sound. It's just kind of whatever. It's a little all over the place. 
But the one thing that brought this album this far up in the list is because there were several moments that I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. That's kind of cool. Like it's, there are some kind of cool moments on this album. And also, uh, Craig LeCicero plays guitar on this album, who is in the band Forbidden. So um, that's kind of cool. I was unaware of that. There you go. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Actually, it's pronounced Miliwake, which is Algonquin for the good land. The good land. (laughs) Anyway, <laughs> on your on your bingo card, is there a Wayne's World <laughs> thing on the bingo card? Anyway, um, it has to be. <laughs> so yeah, overall, I thought Frequency Unknown was like not bad, but not anything that would make me really into that version of the band. And the unfortunate part of this album is that I, you know it gets to the end of the of the legit album, and I go, that was not bad, and I go, wait, what is this? And it's the re-recording of old songs. And I went, whoa, they, this album ah. shot itself in the foot. Big time. Damn. So, Pow. But like I said, I li- I'll i listen to this again before either one of the first two Todd LaTorre albums. Um, so it's my number 13. Moving on to your number 12. Okay, so my number 12 is... Here in the Now Frontier. Oh, interesting. Okay. And I I surprised myself because I went into this album thinking this could be quite high up. And I'm I'm gonna be honest with the with the viewers here. I I've I've been on a bit of a push to to make videos lately, so I've I've kind of I'm still figuring out my my schedule so that i have not yet listened to all the albums yet but i kind of went off instinct so there could be some catching up the next episode where some stuff might move around and i have to be really awkward and change placings and stuff so but, you know just that's- just just so everybody knows i'm gonna go ahead and do this right here in front of everybody so the guy who has a full-time job and a family and does his own videos, and also has started doing a radio show. He was able to get through all of the albums, but Mister, you skipped tracks, <laughs> cheater, cheater. I did. <laughs> I did skip some tracks on my bottom three. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. No, I understand that. That'd be everyone. Everyone's got their own life going on, and you never know. You never Mr. know. Mr. Track by track over here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll allow it, though. If we get to the next episode and you're like, you know what? Actually, I'm going to move this album around. I'm going to allow it because I understand that that's, you know, who, who because who makes the rules? We do. Hmm. All right. Also, also no- normally when we do these bigger rankings, we give ourselves like an extra episode in between. But it was just such an impulsive thing to do Queen's Rank at the time. I forgot that there were eighteen fucking albums I'd have to listen to in a week. So, uh, yep, that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> cool. Here so in the that now being fr- said, wait, is that what it's called? Here in the now frontier. It's such a weird name, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's like ears in the sand and there's jars and it's weird. Um, <laughs> Sign of the times. <laughs> it looks, yeah, the, the thing that I think is so funny about this album, I'll, I'll say it now, is that the album cover looks like a Led Zeppelin greatest hits album cover. And then yeah. the album starts with a song that sounds like Cashmere. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. It's it's. <laughs> Is also very, very strongly grunge influenced. Um, yeah, the, I, actually, the, I think the producer is the same guy that did uh, at the last Alice in Chains album with Lane Staley, and he did Kiss. Uh, their Carnival of Souls. Carnival of Souls. Yeah. Oh well, that it all all adds up then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th- we are in now the zone of albums, like I say, where mm-hmm. there's a strong upward trajectory in, in quality from here on in like my bottom was it bottom six are kind of like okay i'm i have no major desire to revisit these however now we're in the zone where i have tracks all over the place where it's like actually you know what that actually really fucking slapped sign of the times it is indeed <laughs> very grunge influence i i Love this. I can hear Alice in Chains doing something like this. Cuckoo's Nest. That intro is ripped straight from the middle of Garden by Pearl Jam. <laughs> down, 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 down. Yeah. 
but I like it. So, so am I. So am I. So this is the last one with Chris DeGarmo, correct? Am I right? It is. Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Well, not the last one with his involvement. No, but where he's a permanent. The band last member. one. Yeah, where he's where he's in Queens, right? As opposed to got it with them. Yeah. Um, Get a life is a Stone Temple Pilots esque chord ringing sort of song. And, you know, Queens are, are ticking all the grunge boxes on this album. Uh, the voice inside is a big vibey one. Some people fly. It's more laid back vibey one. Saved always love a sitar. You cool song. Hero sl- <laughs> slightly leads are cool. <laughs> um, miles away. It's very nineties. Reach liked it. All I want, Chris DeGarmo on vocals. Cool. It, 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 was, um, it was a little weird, but okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's fun to hear, you know, I always like when bands have multiple vocalists. So, you know, I've been on a big Kiss deep dive once again. Oh, so, shit, yeah. You know, he, yeah, hear, hearing another voice is, you know, it's a fun way to you know, vary things up. Yep. Hit the block, angry, chunky grunge, anytime, anywhere, awesome. Uh Spool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, this album for me is a revisit. You know, I've, yeah. I've 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 hit the point in which I can see myself listening to these again. I love I love the fact uh, that if somebody came to me and said, "There's a song on this album called Spool. What decade did it come out in?" <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like 90s to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spool. Spool. Oh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um here in the now frontier. We'll get we'll we get, are now in Guess what? I will be like you zone. I will be talking about that album on the next episode. So if we need to revisit it for you, we can do that then cuz that is not in the bottom half of my uh my ranking. Uh, my number 12, okay. you've already talked about, Q2K from 1999. Um, the, it's the seventh album, first without Chris DeGarmo as a permanent member of the band. And hmm. um, it, it's the first one where, because even when they did here in the Now Frontier, there were still things about it that I go, this sounds like Queensryche embracing sort of the modern thing going on in music. This one at times just sounds like a totally different band fronted by Jeff Tate. And yeah. usually like, you know, you know me, I'm on board with bands doing something different, but it, but this, it just feels really awkward the whole time. And the thing that bummed me out about this in the, the, you know, going through their entire discography, once I got here, I'm like, this is a band that seemed like they never really cared where they fit in. They were just Queensryche. And this is the first album where, e- even though they'd already done the grungy thing, this is the first one where I feel like it's a little too much trying to fit in and not really knowing how to do it now. Mm. And that that leads me to believe that DeGarmo was a really big part of the band. And that kind of sucks. But Q2K has mm. its moments. But I still I I feel like it's somebody else's pretty good album, but it's a pretty dull and uninteresting Queensryche album, and so yeah, not much more to say about it. It's uh, it you know, Q Q two K. I, I it's, the, it's the fucking yeah. worst. <laughs> God damn it. Even at the time, even like because I was you know, an adult around the the you know, the dawning of the new millennium. Even at the time, anyone that was doing music or stuff and had 2K, we were all like, oh, my fucking God. Like it yeah. was it's not like a thing that did, just didn't age well at the time. It was just like, nope. <laughs> just yeah. just we, we, we <laughs> could get, already see how dated it was. Yeah, <laughs> it's and it was all like we get it. T- the time is passing and now the numbers are changing to a different number. All right. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so anyway. Q2K, my number 12, moving on to your number 11. My number 11 is, oh, that was like a, a Sonny Crockett vocal fry right there. Oh, nice. Surf's up, pal. Yeah, I wish I sounded like him. <laughs> I wish they would put Miami Vice on a streaming service that I 
have. I have I I paid for several streaming services and there's no Miami Vice on any of them and I that really bums me out. I don't want to pay for fucking Peacock. Go fuck yourself. I'm not going to pay <laughs> I'm not going to pay for a service for commercial television. Like that's Yeah. No, I draw the line there. That is not that is not <clears throat> going to be it. Guess again. That's <laughs> not where my money's going. Anyway, uh, what's yeah. number 11? Yeah, like Cool. So my number 11 is Queensryche, the LP. So, oh, 2013. Got it. Yeah. So uh, this one, it's kind of a short but sweet little affair. Um, Thankfully so, because the production is, it's an acquired taste. Uh, It's very bright and quite thin, particularly for an album released in 2013. That, it's one of the, it's one of those albums that I guarantee you they only listen to the mix in the control room on the big ass speakers. They never bothered to listen to it yeah. anywhere else, and they just went, "That's fine, put it out." <laughs> yeah, we got to put it out quickly well, the, because Jeff's putting out his album I, too. I was, <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. Well, at the time, like the the original mix of um, Frequency Unknown before it was remixed was ass. Like there's oh, a was version it? of it out. There's a version of it out there that's just completely, like, dry. There's no treatment to anything whatsoever, and it's just... It basically sounds like no production was this is, done on it. This is the problem with us doing these rankings where we're using streaming services. Is If they're not albums that I know really well, I have no idea that there's a, yeah. a new mix of it. Stop doing well, that! I, I, <laughs> don't put out uh, an album f- that doesn't sound good if it doesn't sound good what's the fucking point going going off of that um to spotify's credit i've noticed the original mixes of megadeth albums popping back up so you have a choice now because mm. before they would have two ver- they would have two versions of uh you know rust in peace but one was just the remaster without the bonus tracks, and one was the remaster with the bonus tracks. Yeah. Whereas they they've put the original mix on the there. Prob- the great. problem with those, especially Countdown to Extinction, is that you can on Apple Music there's a version that's just remastered. It's not the remixed remastered version, but even the mm. remastered version, they fucking bricked wall. They brick walled it, and it is like yeah, it sounds like shit. And it's just one of those things where, like, some albums sound so good, just f- fucking grow up, everybody. Just leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Michael Jackson once yeah. said, just leave, leave. Well, he said, leave me alone. Um, Living Color said, leave it alone. That's a that's one. Mm. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, we did Living Color. Go, go check that out one time. We did. It was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, X two <laughs> intro, in, yeah, it's this intro build up kind of track where dreams go to die. Uh, great opener, very dynamic kind of structured song. Uh, spore, proggy, powerful metal. Uh, in this light is a ballady type track. Redemption. We have entered the riff zone. Now, my my like my enjoyment of these albums come from the fact of this sounds like a rejuvenated Queensryche that coming off of the heels of something like Dedicated to Chaos actually remembered who the fuck they were, you know? You are Queensryche, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's like, stop trying all this weird shit and get back to what worked, you know? Um, and normally I like when a band goes off in weird directions, yeah, uh, it, it wasn't for Queensryche. Um, well, I think it's because they're already a band that went off in weird directions in songs. Like it's yeah, like they already yeah. did things, but they were more organically infused into their sound as opposed to sort of haphazardly stumbled upon <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Just got a fucking dartboard with weird ideas to chuck together. Yeah. Um, Vindication. Uh, is this upbeat kind of progger, killer drumming. Um, I think this is with still with Scott Rockenfield in the band, right? I think so, yeah. 
he's an underrated drummer, dude. Like, there's a lot of killer stuff he plays. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Midnight Lullaby again. Another track with baby noises in it. It's like you know, like last time there was that one. Uh, kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety. I don't know what that is. Maybe it was because I had a traumatic birth and I just babies make me think of a very dangerous place. <laughs> you know. As in, like I my mean, I, my I, birth was a was a was a rough one, you know. <laughs> so I've always kind of associated babies with like near death experiences. But you Apparently don't. When I came out, it was blue. But you don't remember your birth, right? No, but I remember <laughs> being told that I nearly died, and that's always kind of messed with me. <laughs> oh wow, you're a miracle baby. <laughs> yeah, like it was one of those where the hospital was kind of like. Uh, Oh, you'll be fine. And then came back an hour later and said, okay, you need to go to surgery right now. You're going to oh, die. Oh, shit. It, uh, you had infant yeah. surgery. Wow, that's that's hardcore. Yeah. I was a cesarean. I was, uh, you know. I do, I'm sure, I'm I, sure I your mom wants everybody I came, to know I came that. out with some roof. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, so with that... Um, at that little nice little therapy session for me there. Yeah. <laughs> um, a world without you know, that intro part had me thinking of one by Metallica for a split second there. I was like, huh? Huh? Oh, okay. Okay, you're doing your own thing. Okay, cool. Uh, don't look back. Ass kicking riffage here. Fallout, quite a short track. Cool though. Um, open road. Big ballady closer. It's only 35 minutes in length, which gained it major bonus points. Yeah. Um, and I like that from more modern releases from bands because it's like it gives me more time to dig into the the project as a whole yeah. as opposed to a bit of a, you know, slog with its ups and downs. I'd rather just have a concise half hour to 40 minute somewhere in that, 30 something minute zone yeah. is Just my like ideal make, album. Make like, an album you know. where I have the feeling that you created this album to be listened to more than once. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. All in all, um, I'm excited to hear, you know, more of this sort of direction, you know? Yeah. So, uh, cool. that, being, that being said, over to you. My uh, my number eleven. You already talked about this. Operation Mind Crime Two from two thousand six, and it, this actually, even though I don't like this album, it's higher than a lot of these other albums because I feel like a, a lot of work went into this. It feels yeah like a lot of work went into it, and that's that co- almost makes up for the fact that the idea of it probably came from a last ditch effort to make the band relevant. And so, um, but and overall, the production is so flat, dry, lifeless. It is does not do it any favors. And mid two thousands, all over it. <laughs> yeah, and even though like I did find some parts in it that I that I enjoyed, it still does sound like people who didn't write the music from the original trying to write music that sounds like the original, but they're falling short every time they try to do it. And hmm. that, I probably just hit the nail on the head with what actually happened. So. I just, I feel like around this point, like I said before, they were just trying whatever they could to like keep afloat and still be in a band and, you know, not have to get day jobs. So, but yeah, it's not awful. But uh, the big thing about this one is that even though I didn't like the the previous albums that much, like Q2K and, and what have you, this is the first one where I go, oh, this is now rehash. They're now doing rehash. And they hadn't really hmm. done that before. They may have made choices that I didn't think were good or the songs weren't good or whatever, but there was always some sort of thing where like, all right, this is a little different, but this is the first one I went, oh, this, this is the same. This is like trying to really just taking a song template and writing a new song to sound like a song from another album. And um, you, can't use, yeah. you can't use the excuse that it's a sequel because nobody wants a carbon copy sequel. That, they used to do that back in the day. We talked about Home Alone 2. Nobody wants Home Alone 2, okay? They want, uh, they want you to do something different with it. Anyway, Operation Mindcrime 2, the Home Alone 2 of albums. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Hey, man, I, 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 I like me some Home Alone 2. 
Where You Lose Me is Home Alone 3. <laughs> I've never even seen it, so I, I have no uh, no opinion yeah. on that. Anyway. What no just, no the, Macaulay Culkin? Let's fuck out of here. <laughs> let's, wait for, let's wait for Operation Mind Crime 3, which they replaced um, Jeff with a female vocalist. Um, I'm still waiting for Unforgiven 4. <laughs> we were not getting that on this album. It's not happening yet. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... The, Bonus track. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the, the yeah, this album has its moments, but the, the production doesn't really help it because sometimes it actually sounds like demos for what should be the finished album, and mm. that's not good. And But at this point, 2006, I mean, it's pretty much the Jeff Tate show. I think he was controlling everything um according to what i read about this album the rest of the band had very minimal involvement because they couldn't get along with him and to to his to to his defense though just listening to this album the undertaking that this album was and the fact that i'm I, i'm sorry but most people especially at that point were going to listen to queen's right for jeff tate so it's all resting on his shoulders. So if he acted like an asshole, once again, Jeff, that's why I want you to come onto our show for our special episode called Is Jeff Tate an Asshole? That'll be the uh, the episode. Because I'd like to know. I want to know. Anyway, so, yeah. Give me a sign, Jeff. <laughs> um, come on our show and tell us if it's true. <laughs> once again, Living Color. We did that previously. Um, we did. My notes are all over the place. So, um... Yeah, so it's not it's it's not it's not all bad. Operation Mind Crime Two is not all bad, but I have to admit that I became pretty disinterested by the latter half of the album. And um, but you know they get a, they get some points for effort, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's all for my number nine. Now moving on to the last albums that we're going to be talking about in this particular episode, which is our number tens, Queen's Reich's albums. Number 10's The Queen's Rag. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> Let's just do a whole bunch running. of played out impressions. Yeah. Um, Hello, my name is Mustafa El Sakari. My Kickstarter project <laughs> is called Help Me For by New Computer. <laughs> <laughs> that's an that's a, that's a iDubbbz reference from back in the day. Oh, okay. This next one's called I want to buy Minecraft, but can't afford twenty six ninety five. <laughs> That's some fucking good ones, man. Oh, uh, I miss Kickstarter crap. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, I had a little reminisce with myself there. Uh, so my number ten is the verdict. Wait. Okay. There is every possibility that this may change. Okay. Because... Uh, for, a sec- for a second there, I forgot which album it was, because the titles start yeah. running together for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now this is the uh, third Todd Latore Tore album. Um, I've heard half the Todd Latore albums. I still need to... Well, I've heard most of Digital Noise Alliance, and I still need to hear Conditioned Human, because... I was a dumbass and didn't implement a bonus episode in between so, Outcast and So this don't one. don't bother taking notes on any of this last part because I have a feeling <laughs> there might be some tinkering at the end of the of the, of the top ten. Okay, okay, right. Uh, okay, so this is to verdict. Let's have a look, shall we? Um, I've done a bit of an overhaul of how I do my ranking on here. So scrolling, scrolling, found it. Verdict. Uh, Blood of the Levant. Strong opener. Todd sounds great. Uh, Man the Machine. You can definitely hear a Judas Priest influence in this song. Light Years. Uh, that riff is almost note for note home by Dream Theater. That being said, I love the vibe and, you know, fuck yeah. A most triumphant solo, too. Um, Inside Out. This album is the first of the Todd Latour albums I listened to. Um, while I love Jeff Tate, Todd sounds fantastic as a vocalist. Yeah. And despite lacking Tate at this point, Chris DeGarmo, and even at this point, Scott Rockenfield, they're back to doing that powerful, progressive, classic metal sound. Um, albeit with a modern sheen. Yeah. 
Uh, propaganda fashion. It has a pounding drum beat. Uh, it's cool that Todd plays drums on this as well. Yep. Um, uh, does he play? Doesn't Reverie. he play? Does he play drums on the whole album or just on some tracks? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's the whole album. I think. Um, Dark Reverie, an, another great guitar solo in this one. Getting a bit of ear fatigue from the production on this uh, album, though, at this point, because it is pretty compressed. Yeah. Um, there's space in there, like sonically. I can hear reverb, but it's all very upfront. Yeah. Um, ben, those high vocals when it goes halftime are awesome. Love that sort of thing. Uh, inner Unrest. Mmm. Phrygian guitar parts, um, <laughs> Launder, The Conscience, cool stuff. That piano interlude was a cool bit of development. Uh, Portrait is a vibey closer. All in all, Queensryche doing proggy traditional metal with a modern twist feels like they know what they're doing. I'm slightly conflicted on the production as I felt that there were parts where the music could breathe, but others that were too compressed and full on to yeah. make it a, a listen that I could withstand unless it felt like a bit of a commitment you know yeah 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 Th this was <laughs> th this episode's been an occasion where <laughs> i'm realizing we should have put a year episode in between outcast and queens right because i usually save my ass <laughs> that's all right we're gonna we're gonna start off the second episode with a portion called eddie revises part of his list <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay. Yeah. But mine, cool. but mine is solidified, and I'll I'll wrap it up with my. Or okay. you, you were done, right? I uh, I am done. The the verdict is out. Okay. My uh my number ten <laughs> was the album Tribe from two thousand and three, the um their eighth album, and once again, it sounds like a band kind of struggling to figure out who they are now but also trying to be kind of of the time, although the time has kind of passed them and it's a little bit hmm. sort of not, eh, it's, it's not, not all there. Um, but I'd have to admit that compared to Q2K, this album is much more enjoyable and has better songs on it. Still feels kind of like a different band fronted by Jeff Tate, but there's, I would, I definitely say on Tribe, there's definitely some tunes, some some good tracks. Yeah, and um, but that doesn't mean there's not any duds because there are some duds. But overall, I think that this weird period of time when they, you know, obviously Chris DeGarmo is no longer, you know, the soul, the you know, the a major key in the songwriting. I just feel like there, there was a period of adjustment that never ended with the Jeff Tate version of Queensryche. So coming, coming out of this, yeah. it's like they were struggling with what their sound was going to be hitting and missing. Then they were struggling with, well, what do we do? We got to do albums. We got to do a sequel. We got to do, you know, it's like all of these things where I feel like the whole, that whole chunk of albums leading up to Todd Latore were just kind of like a weird uncomfortable period that just never got better. <laughs> and, um, and the same thing happened, you know, as I talked about the first two Todd Latore albums, the same thing happened with that part, that version of the band where they, there was just a little bit of an awkward, some sort of getting going kind of thing. But luckily, and I'll talk about those albums in the next episode. Luckily the two most recent Queensryche albums, I feel like they've found their footing and um, that's kind of a cool thing for somebody like me because I, I had no desire to listen to Queensryche without Jeff Tate because I love Jeff Tate, Jeff Tate as a vocalist. Hmm. But that was also coming from a guy who had not heard anything from Q2K on. So I didn't know there was this awkward Jeff Tate area of shit. I knew that there was that there was <laughs> drama in the band, but musically speaking, I did not know that this was going on. And so I'm coming out of this now being like, all right, well, if I want Queensryche, I'm still going to go for the classic Jeff Tate stuff, even all the way through, you know, here in the now frontier. But um, yeah, but. 
I, I, I can't shit talk the Todd LaTorre version because two of their albums are in the top nine on the next episode. So that is, uh, and we'll get to that. And we'll also get to Eddie's revisions. And um, yes. if, they, if, they're, if they're there, maybe, they, maybe there won't be any revisions, but we'll, we'll allow it. We're all Ju- friends judging, here. Judging, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, although I, I will say, I think, I think with repeat listens, I think the, the revisions, there could be some shifting. There could be some definite moving around. So, yeah. There's three little places I'm looking at in the in the little little ranking list I yeah. have here off to off to the side where I'm thinking, who are you gonna be? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So you know, I'm I'm glad that I mean that confusing era, like yeah. from about Q2K all the way up to. Um, what's it called dedicated to chaos mm-hmm. there is a there's so much material there that is just well pr- pretty much that whole section of the discography is the bottom it, you know yeah it's like it's it's just it's almost like just like trying on a new outfit that doesn't fit you right and then you go well then i'll trade it out for this other outfit and that one also doesn't really fit very well <laughs> it's like yeah it's just a whole lot of that it's and it's like yep you don't look awful but uh i, I definitely would put something else on um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but I, but I'm, I'm, I've, you know, my rankings already ready to go for next episode, but I did tell Eddie that I'm going to take it upon myself to go listen to, um, the operation mind crime albums. Now we're not going to be ranking those cause that's, that's Jeff Tate's Queens right version. Now they're called operation yeah. mind crime. I don't know if they're still going, but I've never heard those albums. And even though we won't rank them because they're not Queens albums, um, I am going to go check them out, so maybe I can like give my two cents on those for those of you who are like, because I know there's probably got to be fans out there that are that are fans of both camps, and um, if that's you, then awesome, because so, um, that that's that's one of those that's one of those situations where you're like, should I get two bands now? That's fucking great. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah. yeah, so that's the ending of our of Queensryche Part One. And, um, yes. and it's cool because you're going to kind of get these two different episodes. This one, I did a lot of bitching and Eddie was a little bit like, eh, you know, about some of the albums, but then the next episode, I have a feeling that the majority of it is, is going to be us saying like banger central, you know, it's cause, uh, cause, cause yeah. a lot of those, there's a lot of those. Absolutely. This, uh, I'm I'm excited to get to the to the good half. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you cool. for thank you for being here for the bad half of Queen's Rank. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time for the yeah. good half. And uh, we'll we'll go ahead and get out of here because it's been an hour and a half, and that's a good link for an episode, if you ask me. So as usual, I'm going to throw it over to my good buddy, Mr. Eddie Sparks, to take us out. Hush now, later, dude. <laughs> You can go and watch something else on YouTube. Oh. Bing, do, ding, do, ding, do, ding, ding, do, ding, do, ding, do, ding, ding. Something, something else. Oh, you, 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 you had already <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just get in there, nail it, and get out. That's like that's yeah. that's my philosophy. All right. Bye, everyone.